Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today is a special day. Really, it was a special week because earlier this week we released the new featured challenge practice models. Now, these featured challenges are shown here at the very top of the library. So here at TooTallToby.com, we've got a repository of 2D to 3D practice models challenges. And what makes the featured challenges so special is that they include the try again functionality. Now, the try again functionality is normally reserved for members members who have the practice models premium subscription. But if you want to use this fantastic bit of functionality, you can use it as long as you access it through these featured model challenges. Now, what makes this try again functionality so special is that it lets you try and then try again to recreate this model to try to get a faster time. So we can see here in data and analytics, in data and analytics, we can see that when I first created this model, I did it in six minutes and 22 seconds. When I created it the second time, it was three minutes and 48 seconds and then I got it down to two minutes and 21 seconds and if you stick around to the end of this video I'm gonna see if I can do it in under two minutes so what did I learn by trying to create this same model over and over and over again well what I learned are some really important time-saving workflows in on shape but of course you may be using a different CAD system. You may be using Fusion, you may be using SolidWorks. It doesn't matter. What matters is that by going through and trying out some different things and trying out some different workflows, you can figure out what's gonna be the most efficient or the best way to save time when you're creating models. And I'm not talking about things like putting all your features into one sketch. I'm talking more about logistical workflows within your CAD system. Now I'll show you a really good example of that here with this mirror command in Onshape. For a long Long time when I went to create a mirror command in Onshape, what I would do is I would click the mirror button up top here, then I would click this face and then I would press tab. And what I'm hoping for there is that I advance from this box down to this box, but it doesn't work. It doesn't give me what I'm hoping for because that would make it really easy for me to then select this face here as my mirror plane. You know, that would be that would be a pretty nice workflow if I could just press tab and then choose that face as my mirror plane. Well, by doing a little bit of experimentation and practicing and using try again and try again, what I learned is that I can first select this face, a little pre-selection, then click the mirror command, then press tab, and look at that. Now I'm in the mirror plane. Now I can pick this face again and enter. And we can even further supercharge that workflow. I'm gonna press control Z by modifying our S key menu. So S key can right mouse button and customize and adding the mirror command to our S key menu. So now my workflow looks like this. I pick this face, I press the S key, I press mirror, tab, pick this face again, and boom, I'm done with that mirror. Wow, that went so fast, let me do it again here. Pick this face, S key, mirror, tab, pick this face again, boom, done with those two mirrors. And so do you ever mirror parts? I know I mirror parts all the time. And so I'm really looking forward to using this shortcut in my real world models. And the other shortcut that I learned about by doing this model over and over again and using the try again function is when you're creating holes, this is what I used to do. I'd pick this face, begin a sketch, get normal two. I'd use the S key to create a rectangle here and I'll make this 76 by 76. That's my rectangular uh, hole layout or bolt, bolt layout. And then I would exit that sketch and then I would choose the whole command. And then I would go and pick this point and pick this point and pick this point and pick this point. But what I learned from some trial and error and also what I learned from YouTube commenter Damasconelli, thanks for that YouTube comment, is that I don't have to go around and pick all these points. What I can do here is I can simply pick this sketch. So I can just pick the sketch itself here and that gives me the location of all those points. So now my workflow is create the sketch for the location of the holes, exit the sketch, pick that sketch from the tree and then S key hole and look at that. All four of those points are automatically populated. Do you ever use rectangles to lay out holes? I know I do all the time. So I'm very much looking forward to using this workflow in the real world as well. And so that is our new functionality, the new try again functionality available to all users if you access the challenge through the featured challenge practice model. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that. Let me know if you've been able to use try again and learn any cool new workflows. And of course, be sure to like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and stick around because now I'm going to attempt to break through that two minute mark for speed modeling this part. 
All right, so let's attempt to model this part in under two minutes and, of course, be on the lookout for some of those workflow shortcuts that we talked about earlier in the video. So let's create this as a public document. Let's make sure that we've got our units set up. You can begin already in a document when you're doing these speed runs, but you can't have any geometry pre-created. So you have to kind of start with the very first sketch. So we're going to say get started. And we're going to take a look here at the featured challenge practice models. This one here, fastest time is 52 seconds. I don't think I'm quite ready for that level yet, but I'm going to try and do this in under two minutes. So here we go. Try again. And three, two, one, go. So here we go. I'm not going to talk too much during this one. I'm just going to kind of blast through it here. Make this rectangle 29 by 48. And we'll add a dimension here down to the base. That's going to be my first feature. And we're going to bring that out to 18 slash 2 because we're going to end up mirroring this whole thing later. Pick this face here, begin a sketch. This will be for my second feature. I'm just going to create that whole end. So we'll come over 25 down to that base. Come over this way, we'll come up 14 over here like so. Let's use the line arc line shortcut in on shape. Close that off and we'll take these two and make them coincident. And then we'll add a circle here going to be 25 and then we'll add a dimension here down to the base 86 and the radius here 20 and then the width of this leg 105 over 2 and now we're ready to turn that into an extrusion that's going to go out to 18 but it's not going to be the whole thing just this region and this region and then we're going to jump into a fillet command here and that's going to be a radius of five. I'm still going to type it in, even though it happens to be there. And then here's our shortcut. Pick this face, S key, mirror, tab, pick this face again, enter, and pick this face, S key, mirror, tab, pick this face again, enter. Oh, yeah, we love that. And now we're going to create that 76 by 76 rectangle. So 76, enter, 76, enter, exit the sketch, pick the sketch, S key, hole, and we're going to type in the seven tab 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 14 tab 4 enter enter assign a material and that's going to be plain carbon steel and measure the mass and 1565 1565 enter and oh yeah we did it look at that we were able to use those shortcuts that we learned along the way and we were able to get this thing answered in under two minutes so it just goes to show you if you use that try again function over and over again, you can really refine your workflows. And of course, we're using it here in this kind of fictional model just to practice our chops. But you're going to be mirroring your parts in the real world. You're going to be laying out holes in the real world. So learn these workflows here in practice models. Use that try again functionality and that way you'll be able to use those same workflows in the real world. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see all of you in the next Too Tall Toby speed modeling tutorial. See you, everybody.